How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're going to take a look at multiple bonds and hybridization. So our objectives will be to describe multiple bonds, meaning double and triple bonds, in terms of sigma and pi bonds and the properties of such bonds. So let's talk about single bonds. So in single bonds, electrons are being shared along the internuclear axis. So if you drew a line that connects the two nuclei, we call that the internuclear axis. So if you were to, you know, that's all right, that's just what I said. That's the internuclear axis. There we go. We call these kind of bonds sigma bonds. So that overlap that's along that axis, directly in between the two nuclei, we call them sigma bonds. So for example, in BF or BH3, boron has sp2 hybrid orbitals. So it has this trigonal planar shape. And then they overlap with the hydrogen's s orbital. So you can see each of those bonds occur along their internuclear axis, which would make all of those bonds sigma bonds. So a single bond is almost always going to be a sigma bond, right? So it's going to occur directly in between the two nuclei. So sigma bonds can spin. So if you take a look, since they line up along the internuclear axis, if you were to spin either one of those atoms, that'll, that'll still overlap in the center. So spinning in sigma bonds is allowed because as it spins, the orbital overlap is still maintained. So molecules can rearrange their 3D structure. You can see in the, the GIF that they're spinning. And if those different colored atoms were longer parts of the molecule, they can change their orientation and their kind of 3D structure because those sigma bonds are able to spin. So when we look at multiple bonds, meaning double and triple bonds, they're going to involve a different kind of bond. It's not going to be a sigma bond. So pi bonds are covalent bonds that involve overlap of orbitals above and below the internuclear axis. So you can see here, I drew a dotted line connecting the two nuclei. That's our internuclear axis. The bonding isn't going to occur along those lines. The shared electrons not going to be found directly in between the two nuclei. So these pi bonds result from the side to side overlap of unhybridized p orbitals. So you can see in the picture, we have two unhybridized p orbitals and they're going to do a little side to side overlapping. So they're going to kind of loop together and that is one pi bond. So because we have it above and below the internuclear axis, that is an example of a pi bond. So you can have up to two pi bonds between two atoms. So you can overlap above and below the internuclear axis or on the left and the right. So it's hard to picture this in 3D, but instead of it being kind of above and below, it could be behind those two nuclei and then in front, which would be kind of hard to show. So if we take a look at the double bond in C2H4, you know, carbon has three electron domains, right? It's bonded to three atoms has three electron domains, which means it's sp2 hybridized. So one of those p orbitals is gonna remain unhybridized, right? So if we take a look, this is carbon's electron configuration. To get sp2 hybridized, we end up with one unhybridized p orbital. So what's that gonna look like? Well, the sp2 hybrid orbitals are gonna form this trigonal planar shape around the equator, but this unhybridized p orbital is gonna go above and below it. So when we look at the bonding between the two carbons, well, we end up with one sigma bond from the overlapping of the sp2 hybrid orbitals, right? So if we line them up like this, this overlap right here is along the internuclear axis. Uh, hydrogens are out there, but we're gonna ignore them for now. So that sigma bond forms right there. Now there's also gonna be one pi bond that's gonna be the overlapping from those unhybridized p orbitals overlapping side to side. Now this whole molecule is planar, right? Because I had the hydrogens off over here and everything is on the same plane, uh, except the pi bond is gonna be above and below that plane. So rigidity, rigidity of pi bonds. So we said sigma bonds can spin, pi bonds can't. So pi bonds don't occur along the internuclear axis. They have to line up above and below that axis. So if we were to try to spin the atoms along that bond, we'd have to break that overlap. 
So in atoms that have this pi bonding, it tends to be more rigid, right? In order to spin, we'd have to break that overlap. Pi bonds are rigid and don't allow for rotation of atoms involved in that pi bond, right? The rest of the molecule where there's sigma bonds, that can spin, but between those two carbon atoms that are pi bonded to each other, they can't spin. So if we take a look at triple bonds, again, this carbon has two electron domains, which means it has to be sp hybridized. So that's going to leave two unhybridized p orbitals. We take one of the s's, we take one of the p's, we end up with two sp orbitals, but then also two unhybridized p orbitals. So they're still looking like they're peanut shaped. They're not looking like hybrid orbitals. So if we take a look, what's that going to look like around a molecule? Well, the two sp hybrid orbitals are going to line up and be linear. And then we're going to have these two unhybridized p orbitals kind of coming out left and right and going above and below. So if we take a look at the bonding, you know, we're going to end up with that one sigma bond again with those hybrid orbitals overlapping along the internuclear axis. But now these p orbitals that aren't hybridized and have an electron in them, they can overlap and form pi bonds. So we're going to end up with two pi bonds. We're going to have the left to right overlap of one of those unhybridized p orbitals with the other one and then an above and below, right? And overall, the shape of the molecule is going to be linear. So in general, double bonds involved a sigma, uh, one sigma bond and one pi bond. And since you need an unhybridized p orbital, you can expect either sp hybridized or sp2 hybridization, since both of them will leave you with at least one unhybridized p orbital. Triple bonds, you have one sigma bond and two pi bonds. So since you need two unhybridized p orbitals, you're going to expect sp hybridization because that's the only one that's going to give you two unhybridized p orbitals left over. All right, so summarize. Can you describe multiple bonds, meaning double and triple bonds, in terms of sigma and pi bonds and the properties of such bonds? I hope so. Goodbye. Okay,